apparatus. All the sequences used in this film are presented in real time. They are not speeded up or slowed down. In the background, you can see the mucociliary apparatus at work. It consists of two main components, mucus and cilia. Mucus is a slimy, sticky material which is used by many different animal species. It serves as a lubricant and also provides a protective layer over moist, soft surfaces. Here is a simple experiment you can do with mucus. Pick up a slug. It will respond by secreting more mucus from its surface and slip from your grasp. Mucus, of course, has many more uses than this. Cilia are microscopic hair-like processes present on the surface of certain cells. The small single-celled protozoa are using cilia to swim. The larger organism, paramecium, is using cilia to create currents in the water for feeding. If you look carefully, you will see the small protozoa become caught in these feeding currents near the paramecium. This is a closer view of the paramecium. Notice the waves on its surface, which are due to the coordinated beating of thousands of microscopic cilia. Cilia are also employed by the gills of fish, oysters, and in this case, young salamanders, to create water currents over the gill surface. The flow created in the water improves gas exchange. If you remove a piece of gill and place it under the microscope, you will see the effect of the cilia. This is a piece of salamander gill lying in pond water and viewed through a microscope. See the flow set up in the surrounding water by the ciliated gill surface, even though it has been removed from the salamander. Cilia are also used by your respiratory tract. This is the inner surface of a human bronchus. See the intense ciliary activity. This brings us to the mucociliary apparatus. Humans and animals such as rats have both mucus and cilia in their nose. This is a rat nose open near the midline to show the inner surfaces. Air passing through the nose is represented here in a crude way by the two white lines. The surface lining of the nose warms humidifies and cleans the inspired air. The surface is increased for this task by the presence of the turbinates. The nasoturbinate, the maxilloturbinate, and the more complex ethmoid turbinates. This surface does not look very active. However, let us look at the area in the circle through the microscope. This field of view is approximately half a millimeter across. The shimmering is due to the beating of thousands of cilia. Over the surface you can see clear, slimy mucus flowing relentlessly. Sometimes it is not possible to light up the whole field. However, wherever you can see the surface, you also see mucus, mucus and more mucus flowing continuously. This mucus flows eventually to the nasopharynx, is swallowed and ends up in the stomach. Now let us see how this system works. If you cut the nasal epithelium perpendicular to the surface, these are the structures you would see. The airspace is at the top. The blue line indicated by the arrow represents the mucus blanket. This blanket of slime is floating on a watery fluid, the periciliary fluid, which bathes the cilia. This fluid is essential for the function of the system, but very little is known about it. Mucus is driven along by the action of these hair-like processes, the cilia, which are extensions of the underlying epithelial cells. The epithelium contains non-ciliated cells, ciliated cells, and the dark structures, the goblet cells, which contribute mucus to the mucus blanket. Mucus is also produced by the underlying glands. Now let us look more closely at the cilia. Here is a scanning electron micrograph of the surface of the rat nasal epithelium to show the cilia, which look like clusters of tentacles. 
Now we shall see how they work. This animated diagram represents, in a simplified way, the beating of a single cilium. Notice that it is straight on the forward or effector stroke and contacts the mucus blanket, and then bends down for the return or recovery stroke. Now let us consider the function of the mucociliary apparatus. If you drop flowers into a stream, they are carried away because they float on the surface. Particles of dust are carried out of your nose in a very similar way. We can demonstrate this similarity by dropping small particles onto a mucociliary apparatus. These are lycopodium spores magnified several hundred times, which we shall now use in place of the flowers. Here are the spores on a mucociliary stream which is slowly carrying them away. These spores indicate the flow rate of the mucus blanket, but they give us no information on what is happening in the underlying periciliary fluid. However, if we watch carefully, there are clues available. This is a rat nasopharynx. Watch the dark particle indicated by the arrow. It makes erratic movements, unlike the steady flow of particles in the mucus blanket. We believe that these erratically moving particles lie under the mucus blanket in the periciliary fluid. Frogs have a mucociliary apparatus in their mouth to carry food particles, such as cricket legs, off to their stomach. This system is often used as a model for studying mucociliary function. This is a frog palate preparation. The arrows indicate the direction of mucus flow. We will now show you the effect of formaldehyde on the frog palate mucociliary apparatus. The frog palate is being placed in the exposure chamber. On the video screen you can see, in the top left hand corner, the clock and stopwatch from the time date generator. The stopwatch is used for the determination of mucus flow rate and ciliary beat frequency. The mucus is seen to flow slowly over the surface of the frog palate prior to exposure. This is a direct view of the surface of the frog palate before the exposure. The cilia are not very active and the mucus is flowing slowly. The palate has now been exposed to six parts per million of formaldehyde gas for about one minute. Watch the effect of this irritant gas. About two minutes later, there is still rapid mucus flow. However, if the exposure is continued, the mucus will slow down and eventually stop. The palate has now been exposed for about six minutes. The mucus has nearly stopped flowing and it appears more rigid and opaque. However, the cilia are still beating vigorously. If the exposure is continued, the cilia will eventually cease beating. In the area indicated by the arrow, you will see spreading zones of opacity as formaldehyde reacts with the surface of the mucus blanket. Other methods can be used to study mucociliary function. Tissues from the nasal passages of rats can be studied in culture medium. This is a rat nasoturbinate in culture medium. Notice how the cilia continue to beat and cause the medium to flow in a way which is reminiscent of the flow created in pond water by the salamander gill. The ciliated epithelial cells can also be separated from the turbinate and studied in isolation. These cells were separated from the surface of the rat nasoturbinate. You can see how the isolated ciliated cells swim around, reminding us of the single-celled protozoa which use cilia for locomotion. So, the wide use of mucus and cilia by nature has resulted in a rich source of models for the study of the mucociliary apparatus.